a little rice cake of string of hearts. That's the goal. As many living plants as possible. It's already a mess. Got this like big pile of sphagnum and tangly stuff. Hello friends and welcome back to my channel. My name is Emma and today I'm going to be potting up my string of hearts. So this video was actually requested by Corey over on Patreon. Thank you, Corey, for the amazing suggestion. He wanted to see how I would pot up my propagations of my string of hearts because they've got such fine, delicate roots. So I'm going to show you how I'm gonna do that today. But basically, I propagated my string of hearts on the 21st of March, 2021. So nearly four months ago now. And I took my plant and I chopped it all the way back to the to the soil. Like, I think it had maybe 10 or 12 strings, but they were all kind of leggy and they didn't look that great. And it was like taller than me and I'm 5'9 and it was just huge. And we were about to get Cleo and I didn't want her to get to it. So I chopped it. I chopped it all the way. And I tried a new propagation method. I tried the butterfly propagation method where you cut literally the little butterfly. So the two heart leaves that are coming out from the stem cut on either side of that, and that's con considered a butterfly. And I stuck that on a sphagnum moss and just kept it in a little container and propagated it. And I've got one, two, three containers of that. Also, when I cropped it, the scraggly ends, stuck them in water because the leaves weren't big enough to butterfly. It's really hard to show you, but like, I have a few of the strings that are shorter than the others on here. These ones were the ones I stuck in water and then potted back in the main pot. But look how much it's grown in four months. Like, what the heck? Like, it's longer than my arm. Why? How? Anyways, string of hearts goes really friggin' fast, which is great. But it's time to pot up my cuttings. And I'm not gonna pot them in the original pot because this pot's doing fine. I'm going to pot them a little bit differently. So I kept these all in different places in my flat. So this one I kept in the Ikea cabinet, um, but I kept forgetting to water it. So it's wet now because I watered it like yesterday, but it's not doing the hottest of all of them. It's quite small. I don't know. I don't think it liked the Ikea cabinet very much. I think it's probably too humid in there for it. This one I kept on my plant shelf. You can see the sphagnum is fully dry because I've let it dry out by accident. But this one's doing pretty well. I left this one with the top off and it was just chill and happy like this. This one is doing the best of all of them. And this one I had on my normal plant shelves, but at the beginning I put the lid on it and I let it sit like that. So the sphagnum didn't dry out as fast as I think it did on the other ones. So these ones got really good starts and like have been growing super well. You can see it won't even stand up by itself anymore. They're ready to be potted up. It's, it's time. So they're doing really well. I'm going to be using a sort of succulenty soil mix for my string of hearts. They are semi-succulent plants and so they do like a sort of drier mix and more well draining than some other plants, which is good. This is all I have of my succulent mix, so I need to mix up some more. So I got a tub. Then I also have a bag of like normal potting mix. This one is mostly cocoa coir, a little bit of bark, and like a little bit of pumice and a tiny bit of worm castings. So it's pretty average potting soil. So I'm gonna put that in. And then to add some extra drainage, I've got some sand and I think this is fine pumice. So I'm gonna add a bit more of that in just to give it a little bit more drainage. So this mix, it's about like, kind of just mixed itself together, but it's about two parts of the average potting soil one part pumice and one part sand. So I'm just gonna mix that all together. And that looks like some really nice stuff. I have never propagated these plants like this before. I'm not quite sure how I'm gonna do it yet. I'm going to see 
if I can take them out of the moss or if their roots are just too fine, I'm just gonna stop because I don't need that stress in my life. So I'm gonna take them out of the one that was in the Ikea cabinet. I'm picking this one because it's the wettest. Um, I don't really feel like ripping roots from dry moss because that sounds like a hard time. So I'm just gonna try and remove as much of the sphagnum as I can without ripping roots off. Tiny little baby. If I can get all of them into like just tiny little babies. I don't know, like there, there's not that much root on there. Like there really isn't. I'm gonna do it, I'm just gonna do it. It'll be fine. So from that entire thing, I literally only have a handful of cuttings. So I'm going to be using this really small pot. I mean, it's not tiny, but pretty small. And I'm just gonna fill this up with soil. I've just filled it up all the way because the roots are so small on this, I don't think it'll be very difficult to put them in. So I'm just gonna like poke small holes with my finger and then plonk them in. So there we go. This little pot here is what we've got. Pretty much just sitting on the top, like barely covered in soil. They didn't have huge roots, so I think this will be fine for them. I have a feeling they'll root quite well in here, and if I keep the soil fairly moist, they'll probably be pretty happy. Oh my god, I'm sweating, it's so freaking hot. It's like, I'm pretty sure it's supposed to be 30 degrees here today, which is like high 80s, 85. The UK is not meant for this, it's not. Next up, I'm going to pot these, and because the sphagnum is dry, I'm going to be doing it a little bit differently. I know I could just wet the sphagnum, but I'm trying different methods, so uh, that's what it is. Basically, I can pull this out in like a cake. It's kind of like a rice cake, a little rice cake of string of hearts. But what I'm gonna do is I'm going to fill this with soil and then kind of put this on top like that. I've seen Harley G do this method, so I'll link that video down below. I think it's in her string of hearts video. Um, but I saw her do it, so I'm gonna do it. If, if it works for her, then why wouldn't it work for me? But yeah, so I'm gonna fill this with soil. So I've got that mostly filled with soil, and I'm literally just gonna stick that on top. <laughs> that was so freaking easy. And then I'm gonna water it, so then the sphagnum will be wet, and it'll be fine, I think. I'll let you know how this goes in a little bit. Water this bad boy. Hopefully this will allow like the roots safe transition between the sphagnum and the soil. That's the goal. As many living plants as possible. For this last one, I think I'm going to split it into two pots. It's a rectangle. Hopefully it'll be fine. I think I might do kind of a combination of the two methods. So I'm gonna try and take it out of this in like a chunk, but then divide it as needed. This one's like grown so much better than the others and I've got no idea why. Like this one's actually starting to grow tubers. There are the roots, like they're just a lot longer and then the little bump is like the starting bit of a tuber, which is awesome. Maybe I'll do half of them with the sphagnum and then half of them pulling them out. Either way, soil. I feel like I should have something to talk about, otherwise I'm just sitting here repotting things, but I don't. The annoying thing about string of hearts is they get so freaking tangled. Like, <sighs> it's already a mess. All this like big pile of sphagnum and tangly stuff. This one's doing so well. Look how long it is. Hard to see, but it's so long. I think these ones might have done the best because they have the biggest butterflies. This was the one that I kind of sorted first. And so it has like the best of the best. I think to answer Corey's question um, and like the reason behind this video is that like they've got super fine roots and they do. I think the answer is just be very careful and like be super gentle with them. 
there's no need to be harsh with them in any way. I think that's probably full enough for now. You see, I might, like I said, do some with the sphagnum on, just because it makes my life easier. <laughs> I think the sphagnum will also help keep the soil, like, or keep it moist for the beginning, which is super important. You don't want it to be getting too dry in your transitioning. This one is one of the longest stems so far. There are all my little new pots of string of hearts. I now have five plants if you include the original. But yeah, so that is it. That is me potting up my string of hearts. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave a thumbs up down below and comment on other houseplanty things you'd like me to talk about in the future and subscribe for more. Also, have your say in my channel, head over to my Patreon. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time. Bye!